welcome to my studio. So today we're going to be doing one of the projects of my thematic unit on gnomes. And today's art project is going to be a painting. If you're interested in the history of gnomes, check out my other video and stay tuned to the end and I'll tell you a super silly joke about gnomes. All right, supplies that you'll need for this lesson include a bowl with some water, some watercolor paints, but you could use markers or crayons instead. A brush, a ruler, a pencil. I've got um, a white and black crayon, a piece of paper, mine's nine by um, 12. And then we also have these two holiday stampers, but you could just make a decorated edge too if you want. That's going to be for our picture frame for our gnome. And of course, your imagination. All right, so for our first step, we are going to measure a one inch border to go around our picture to make it a picture frame that makes it more fancy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my ruler and I see here on my ruler that I have this little uh, first mark that starts right here. And this is gonna be the side where the numbers are further apart, not the centimeter side, that's this side. That's where the numbers are much closer together. But we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna go at the top of our paper and we are going to measure one inch here and then we're gonna slide it down towards the bottom of our paper, put one inch here and then we can take our ruler and we can line it up so that the dots just barely touch the edge of the ruler and we can draw a line. And we're gonna do that for the other sides as well. All right, for our next step, we're gonna estimate um, because we want to have a hat that goes about two-thirds of the way down. So if I think that this is about the middle point where we have a equal parts top and bottom, I want this to be two-thirds. So I'm going to think about if I put a mark here and a mark here, is that close to approximately thirds? Maybe. I think so. So I'm probably going to end my hat right about in this area here. So this is all an estimation for where the hat's going to be. And I like to have the hat near the, um, the tip of the hat be here um, at the line that we just drew for our top border. And then how far should it come out? Uh, you know, really it's up to you how wide you want your hat to be, but I wanted to fill up most of the space. So it definitely does by putting two marks there. Then I'm gonna use my ruler and I've used some great estimation here. And I'm going to just do two lines that come down, that connect up those dots. And then I wanna make sure that this one is as parallel to the bottom edge of the paper as I can get. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're ready for our next step of our gnome. And you have choices. You could make a gnome where his eyes are hidden, kind of like one of these examples here, or you can make it so that you can see most of their face. If you're going to do a nose that's going to come close to the hat here, I like to, for a boy gnome, I like to make it so that it, it's nice and wide, and I always draw lightly until I get it right. But if you plan on having eyes, and goodness knows there are lots of great eyes you could make for these gnomes. I'm going to make it go a little bit further down like so. Now I realize that some of you may want to do a girl gnome. So I'm at the point now where I'm going to start doing differences between girls and boys. So I'm going to go back and forth and show you both. All right. So for this girl gnome, I like to make her nose more of a circle. Now I'm gonna show you a bunch of different kinds of eyes. You could do eyes that are ovals, that are just filled in solid black, or even circles if you want it to. I like to call these more like the Hello Kitty eyes. And you can definitely add eyelashes if you want to, but you don't have to. You could do eyes that has the black circle in it. Maybe you would do some that are round 
or if you want to have more of an oval with a circle in it, you certainly can. If you feel confident with your anime eyes and the style of that, for sure you could definitely add in eyes that look more like that. Make sure you get some nice little highlights in there as you do that. You could definitely make that as fancy as you want. These are some cute little kawaii eyes, I think. Oops, just like so. Or you might wanna flip it and just do this part here. That's really gonna be up to you. You can also do winky eyes. And I think those look really good on the boy gnome. And of course, if you do winky eyes, you can add eyelashes. You know, boys have eyelashes too, if you want to. Um, so I am going to give him some winky eyes here. It makes it look like he's smiling, even though we won't be able to see his mouth through the beard. And then I might decide to put just a couple of little eyelashes on the end. For the girl, I like to give her those cute little Hello Kitty-like eyes. So I'm gonna just make it an oval, add a couple eyelashes, and then do one that's close to the same over here. And I might go back and hit that with the crayon when I'm done. Next, for the mouth. So girls, are you're gonna have mouths. And so there's lots of ways you can do the mouths. You could just have a smile. You could have an open mouth, maybe part of the tongue showing, and you would shade that in dark. You might even have lips. You might even have some chompers, like you're just giving it a big smile here. Really, that's gonna be up to you what kind of smile you wanna have. I mean, if you wanna add lips to any of these, you're welcome to. I'm gonna do the smile that just looks like this. And for a girl, you'll probably wanna go ahead and close off the face. And then I do sometimes get boys who wanna do a gnome without a beard, so this would be your option too, but you might wanna change up something like the eyes or the nose. All right, so back to the boy. We need to get a beard in there. So I am going to start the beard, the middle of the outside edges of the left and right of the nose. The beard is going to line up with the bottom corner of the hat. Okay, so it's gonna go right about to here. And then the bottom of the beard, I like it to actually go beyond the bottom of the border here. And it kind of looks like an upside down um, Hershey kiss or it could even kind of look like a heart. So I'm just gonna make that go around like so. And um, I'm not gonna put any lines in there yet for the beard lines because I am going to um, put a present in his hands because these are holiday gnomes. I am gonna finish off his hat area here and you have two options. You could draw a line down and then put an ear on the side. That's one option just like so. But I think I'm gonna make the hat touch the beard so it's like his hat's covering his ears. So I'm gonna erase just a little bit of the bottom edge of that uh, hat, and then I'm gonna just make it curve down to the beard. Now for the girl, I like to add hair, and you have lots of options for hair. You might decide you wanna do wavy hair, or you might wanna do some straight hair instead. Or you may even wanna add a braid. And I do braids like hearts stacked on top of each other. And then I just add a line through the middle and add that little ending to it. But really it's gonna be up to you what you wanna do. I'm gonna make the sides match on mine. So I'm gonna do some more hearts. Okay. If you're doing the girl, I add the present below her chin, leaving room for a ribbon. And then I'm um, adding my wrapping paper. All right, so now I have some options. Do I want his hands holding the present or I just wanna have his arms in there indicating that he's holding it. 
So this is definitely the easier of the two options. If you just do this big bow here, like you would draw a picture of your shoelaces, that could just be his arm and he's gonna be holding the present behind it. So that is one option for you. Um, if you want him to actually have hands in the picture, then I do cartoony hands. So he's gonna have three fingers and one thumb. And then the thumb is going to be partially behind the present because it's holding it. You can add a line for a sleeve. And then sometimes I have kids that wanna have their hands um, up. Maybe he's gonna be holding a candy cane. I could definitely have him holding that. So we're gonna have him um, just holding this candy cane. And then I would bring this line down, but if you're not gonna have hands up, just bring the line down from where his elbow is. Now you could leave it like this, but I'm actually gonna put a little, little legs on them and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. But first, let me finish with the top of the All girl. right, so for the girl, um, I like to bring the arms out from the head area like this and then her arms will be like this. And of course you can add the hand variation that I showed you. And I'm gonna add a little pretty collar to her dress. You can decide if you wanna add that or not. And then for the bottom part, I just bring down this part here. And if you wanna leave it like this, you could, but I'm gonna add um, maybe a foot at the bottom. That's my Hello Kitty foot. Or you could even have, if you've got enough room, you could add a proper uh, shoe and maybe candy cane stockings. That might be something you might wanna do. This looks like she's walking somewhere, walking towards me. And for him, if you want him sitting down, you would do his little feet like this and maybe have the line go up. And if you wanna put a little belt, if you've got room for a little belt, you could definitely do that too. If you'd rather just do a shoe like that at the bottom, that's okay too. Um, this makes it look like he's doing a little dance. But just for variation's sake, I'm gonna do both of his uh, feet so it looks like he's sitting down. And of course, if that arm wasn't there, if that arm was actually over here, you can see how that would look if I covered that part up. Now that we've done this part, we can go ahead and put the lines in for his beard. And remember, we're not decorating the hat because that might be something that you in your classroom or you on your own would go ahead and put a poem in or a limerick or a haiku or something in there to fill in that area to make it extra special and fun. And now we're ready to move on to the printing of the border. Um, and uh, I am also going to show you a wax resist technique. So for the sake of this video, I'm only going to do this with the boy, but you can imagine applying it to the girl one as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to grab my stamps and I'm going to go ahead and stamp them in a pattern. So um, these are just little inexpensive stampers. I actually got these off Amazon uh, for a great price. But I'm going to be skipping spaces because I'm going to put a blue one in between these purple snowflakes. And then we're not going to paint these because... Um, these uh, are water-based inks, and if they get wet, they smear, and then they disappear. All right, I think that's good enough. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the blue one as well. The next part that I'm going to be doing with you, um, we're gonna be uh, using watercolors. So I'm gonna use a black crayon, and I am going to outline all my pencil lines because I don't want the paint to mix in case they're wet. So that's my next step. And make sure you press hard because if you have any breaks in your great wall, it will flood in between. And sometimes two colors will mix that you're not super happy about.
All right, I've put a drop of water into my entire, all my little paint sets. This is just a clean drop of water that I'm using. Um, one thing I didn't mention is, is you might want to have a paper towel handy. It's nice for fixing mistakes All as right, well. All right, so I am now going to go into the red because gnomes have traditionally red hats, but you could have made your hat any color that you like. And so I'm just going to paint this in. And I'm going to wait to do this part because I'm going to do something special with that part. I'm just interested in painting the gnome. By the way, if you go ahead and paint him, when you do the next part, it has had a chance to dry and it's less likely that the color will go where you don't want it to. Um, of course, anytime I switch colors, I rinse my brush, but because these are watercolors, you do need lots of water to keep them active. So you could mix colors if you want to. If you ever wondered about the ridges in the lid, that's what they're for. So if I mix a little brown, rinse my brush, go into some orange and do sort of a great tan color. Um, maybe I might need a little more yellow with that. And you could custom blend the skin color that you want to use for yours. And um, I'm gonna do that and don't forget his hand. Great, and when you're done, just don't forget to clean that area out. If you want a gray beard, you need a very watery black to do that. You could leave it traditionally white. If it's too black, hey, dip your brush in the water and then just add more water to it and use that water to spread it around. Oh, is it still too dark? Hey, if it's still too dark, grab that paper towel to a nice clean spot and dab it and it should lighten it a little bit and get it more to the color that you want it to be. All right, so now I've decided I am going to have a festive green outfit on my gnome. There we go. Use the tip of your brush to get into the little tiny areas in the side of your brush to um, get into wider areas. So what if I had made a mistake here? Like I went, oopsies, that's not supposed to be there. Hey, no worries. Dab it dry with a paper towel. If you have clean water, rub it with your clean brush. And when you do that, it pretty much comes off. If you take too much of the original color off, you could go back in there and repaint it into. And then that's the bottom of his feet. So I'm gonna put little um, black area on there. And then he's gonna be holding a candy cane, so I'm actually gonna make that red as well. Oops. All right, now for the next step. <clears throat> I am going to be doing something in this inside rectangle that's not the gnome, and it's going to be either a star, and you can make star, um, stars as fancy as you want them to be, um, you could try doing the five-pointed star without doing the inside lines, or you could do a capital letter A, but make the line too wide, and then do an X to play connect the dot. That always makes a good looking star. Up here, I started doing snowflakes. Easy peasy, X and plus, you could do those. You could also do swirls. And then some people um, I've noticed are also doing uh, maybe even candy canes in the background. And you could use the white to uh, show up with that because we're going to be using the white crayon. I'm just going to do snowflakes to make it super peasy easy. And then I'm going to show you how to do the background behind the gnome. All right, so now I have some choices to make. I could make this guy purple, I could make this guy blue, I could do a sunset colors, I could be black and have it be pitch night, uh, pitch dark at night. Um, but I'm gonna do blue, I think. So I'm gonna do blue. I probably wouldn't do red or green because I already used a lot of that on my gnome. But um, here's the thing, when you paint over this crayon, it is supposed to show up, but sometimes maybe you didn't press hard enough or maybe um, there's too much paint. Sometimes you can just add a little bit of water and see how the water makes a big difference here. If the paint's not so thick, 
it shows up better. But if it isn't showing up great, hey, just take your paper towel and kind of dab it and that will make those show up. Some paints or colors are easier to do than others. The blue I have found is the hardest one to make it work, which is why I showed that one. Uh, purple usually resists a good bit better for some reason. But here, see, just add a little water and spread that and it usually works much better. It's just because the paint's too thick. And it's always best to paint dry um, next to dry, which is why I like to do that, um, give this a chance to dry just a little bit better before I went back into it, the, the picture next to it. All right. And then, like I said, the only other thing left is to probably go ahead and maybe do something special with the hat. If you're not gonna do a writing because you're not in my classroom, then maybe you could have added designs to it as well or have special holiday words you'd wanna put in it. All right, I hope you enjoy this painting. I hope you enjoyed that painting. So here's my super silly gnome joke for you. So why are gnomes always great at baseball? Because they're always hitting gnome runs. <laughs> gnome runs. All right, so remember, um, you know, tell someone you really appreciate them today. It'll mean a lot to them. And be sure to spread your kindness to everyone you meet. It makes all the difference in the world. Thanks. And as always, keep on making great art.